Hi. While Rocksteady on the Osmo Action is an excellent stabilization system, as you can see from this before and after example, it has issues eliminating side-to-side -side movement. We can mitigate this issue, or at least most of it, using the free Blackmagic Design DaVinci Resolve application. Resolve's free version has very few limitations. There are no nag screens or time limits or watermarks. The free version lacks the neural network, machine learning, 8K support, collaboration support, and some other advanced features. But for most users, it will be more than adequate for you to edit your Osmo videos and correct this issue with Rocksteady. This video is not intended to be a comprehensive tutorial on using Resolve. I've linked to Casey Ferris's channel in the description. He has excellent beginner to advanced tutorials for Resolve. I've also linked to the Resolve download page. I did not link to the download file itself since by the time you watch this, newer versions of the application may have been released and I don't want to link to an old version. Clicking on the download link will take you to the Blackmagic support page. On this page, you'll find the latest download section. Resolve may be the first item in the list here, but if it's not, scroll this section down until you see the DaVinci Resolve sections. There are two versions. Studio is the paid version, and we want the free version above that here. Click on the button for the version appropriate to your operating system. Once done, you're presented with a registration screen. If you're concerned about spam from these guys or privacy, you can just put bogus data into the form's required fields like this, then click on register and download. Once downloaded, go ahead and install the application and launch it. Once it launches, you'll be presented with this project manager screen and it has a single entry in it, untitled project. This is where you'll go to load up old projects or start new ones. Double click on Untitled Project and the application's main screen will be presented. At the top are options to enable and disable specific sections of the UI. Go ahead and click on any of these that are highlighted as white to turn them off. The only one we want left open is the media pool over to the left here. At the bottom of the screen are icons to let us navigate to the different sections of the application, but we'll only be using the edit page that we're currently on and one other page called color that we'll use to do the correction of the Rocksteady weaving issue. If the media pool element in the upper left is currently turned off, go ahead and click on it to enable it. Once that's complete, go ahead and bring up your finder on a Mac or Windows File Explorer and just drag and drop the clip you want to correct into this area of the screen here. Resolve may ask you if you want to change the frame rate of the project to match your clip and if it does, just click on Change to proceed. Once your clip is in the media pool, right mouse click on it and select Create New Timeline using selected clips. This will present a dialog box where we can name the timeline. For this example, I'll just call it Rocksteady. Resolve will default to HD 1920x1080 and since I'm using a 4K clip, I'm going to uncheck the Use Project Settings box here and then click on the Format tab at the top. From here, I can select a different resolution for the timeline and I'll choose 3840x2160 for a 4K timeline. I could also change the frame rate here for the timeline as well, should I want to do that, but the default matches the clip, so I'll leave it at 23.976. Click on Create to create the new timeline. Now we have a timeline with our clip in it down here. We can press the spacebar to start and stop playback of the clip in the upper right timeline viewer. If by chance you can't see all of your clip in the timeline down here, press Shift Z to zoom it in and out until you see the entire clip. So we can see a lot of left and right weaving in this clip. I hit the home key to restore the playback head to the start of the clip. We're going to use Resolve's color page to correct the weaving, so click on this icon at the bottom of the screen like this to go into the color page. This page might look pretty intimidating, but have no fear, we're just on this page to use its stabilizer and it's super simple to use. 
In the center of this toolbar here is the Tracker and Stabilizer tool icon. Click on it to activate it. Once it's displayed like this, click on this drop down here and change it from Window to Stabilizer. Then click on these three dots here and down towards the bottom select Classic Stabilizer like this. At the top here we have Pan, Tilt, Zoom, and Rotate. Uncheck everything except for Pan. We only want to correct the left and right panning movement. At the bottom, uncheck Zoom. Stabilizers always zoom the footage, and this one is no exception, but we want to manually control the zoom so that we can get the best result possible. Also, ensure that the drop-down on the right here is set to Cloud Tracker. If your playhead is not at the first frame of the clip, you can press Home at this point to put it there, and that's where we'll want it for this. Now we click on the Track Forward button here. Resolve will now analyze the clip frame by frame to determine its movements, and you can see in the clip there are lots of little tiny crosses glittering that indicate the points that the tracker is using for this process. Once it's finished, press the Home key to restore the playback head back to the start once again. Then click on Stabilize. At first, it may look like nothing happened. We just need to play the clip back to see the result. Press the spacebar to start playback. Look at the left and right edges of the frame, and you'll see black bars appear, and this is due to the stabilizer shifting the clip left and right to compensate for the rock steady weaving effect. At this point, we're done on the color page. We can go back to the edit page and finish up our process. Back on the edit page, click on the clip to ensure that it's selected. We do not need the media pool eating up screen real estate, so I'll close that now. Now I'll click on the inspector tool in the upper right so that we can use it to zoom and position the clip for final output. We can see that we have this black edge along the right side of the clip, so I'll zoom the clip using the zoom tool in the inspector like this. I click and drag the mouse to the left or right to zoom in and out, and I'll drag to the right for this to zoom it in. Once I see the black bar is gone, I can play back the clip using the spacebar and see what other adjustments will need to be made. I hit Home to move the playback head to the start and spacebar to start playing. While it's playing back, I look closely at the left and right edges to see if a gap appears. When I see a gap appear, I manually move the playhead so that I'm at the biggest part of the gap, then I adjust the zoom again to eliminate it. I also know that since I've already zoomed in, I have some room to slide the clip to the left or right as needed. I use the X position control to shift the clip to the right a bit like so. Then I hit the Home key and start the process over in case my changes have affected the clip prior to the last change. I spotted a tiny bit of a gap there, so I do the same thing to eliminate it here. I move it to the right with the X position control again. I want to try and minimize the amount that I zoom as that will impact the quality of the final result. Once again, I start back at the beginning and check the entire clip to make sure I didn't miss anything. Now you can see there's still some bobbing in the clip, and we can further stabilize it with some tilt corrections or rotation. But for this example, I just want to show you how to get rid of the weaving. To see what the result is compared to the original clip, here's a split screen of the original and the stabilized clip. The bottom is the original, and the top is the corrected clip, and you can see the stabilization made a huge difference and eliminated almost all of that weaving effect. Once you've finished your corrections, go up to File and click on Quick Export. This will present you with a set of presets for saving the final result. YouTube and Vimeo as well as some others. Choose the appropriate format that you want to save it in and click Export. You'll be prompted for a save location, so choose one and click Save. The export will run and when it's done it will say Close at the bottom of its status dialog. The final thing you can do is to save the project you created in Resolve by pressing Ctrl-S on Windows or Command-S on the Mac. You'll be prompted to name the project, and it'll then be saved in the Resolve Project Database. 
That's it for this tutorial. I hope it helps someone. If you liked the tutorial, please click like as that helps other folks find it. And until the next video, keep on being creative.